Today, we're going to be talking about design thinking, what it is, and why it's critical to use design thinking in order to create user-centered products, and how some of the most successful companies in the world are actually using design thinking today. Go ahead and get a pen and paper, and we're going to take two minutes to draw a vase. Feel free to pause the video now if you need to um, go get your supplies, but we're going to just take a second to draw a vase. Your vase can be however you like. It can look um, however realistic you want it to be. It can include a flower. It can include whatever you think a vase needs. All right, we're about halfway done. Make sure that you're well on your way to finishing your vase within the next minute. All right, we have about 30 seconds left. All right, you should be finishing up. You should be pretty proud of your vase. You should, you know, consider signing it or dating it or what have you. Take a moment to wrap up right about now. Now, I want you to take that idea and in a very dramatic fashion, crumple it up and throw it away or recycle it. I'm gonna ask you to draw something else, so make sure you still have another piece of paper and another pen. At this time, I want you to take two minutes to draw a new way of experiencing flowers in your home. The time has already started. All right, just about a minute left. Draw your ways of experiencing flowers in your home. All right, a little bit less than 30 seconds left. And time is up. Have you ever seen a question with the answer already built in? Think about what I asked you to do the first time. I asked you to draw a vase. We've all seen a vase. They all relatively look the same. They all have 
a similar function, maybe the exact same function. And the next question I asked you was to draw a new way of experiencing flowers in your home. And I bet you almost 100% of you probably did not draw a vase the second time I asked. So what was the difference? In the first question, I told you exactly what to give me. I didn't give you room to think about why I might want to experience flowers, the times I'm able to experience flowers, what my day looks like when I'm with flowers and when I'm without flowers. I certainly didn't give you a chance to incorporate any new technology. In the second question I asked you, I told you my goal as a user, which was to experience flowers, but I didn't tell you how to solve that problem. I let you think about ways that you might want to solve that problem and I let you be creative. And in a sense, what we just practiced was design thinking. And with design thinking, what we're talking about is having a different approach to asking the question. So instead of drawing a vase, drawing a new way to experience flowers, thinking about creating a better search results page. This is essentially the same as asking you to draw a vase because what I'm saying is draw me this exact thing. I'm not leaving you any room to create differentiation. I'm not allowing you room to be creative and to incorporate new types of technology or mental models as we talked about in the first lesson. Um, as a user though, I don't really care if it's a search results page or not. What I care about is that I need to learn about a topic, right? That's my goal as a user is to learn about a certain topic. The way I do that might be a search results page, but it doesn't have to be necessarily. If I ask you to create me a pill bottle and label, it's the same thing. We're stuck with the answer already built into the question. But as a user, I don't care the way I do it, but I, knew, I know I need to accurately manage my medicine. The difference here is that one half is product centric and the other half is user centric. So instead of asking ourselves what products and services we can sell to customers, um, instead of asking ourselves what features and functions do customers want, and also instead of asking ourselves how to make money off of our existing customers, and also asking ourselves not how we can reach sales targets and business goals, right? Because when we ask these types of questions, these are very limiting in their nature and they're very short-sighted and they don't use terms and language that users actually have when they think about the goals that they have, the needs that they want, and the reasons why they buy your product. So we need to ask ourselves, what do customers and users need to get done? Because that answer to that question should inform what products and services we sell. Instead of trying to think about what features people want, we need to ask ourselves, what problems are they trying to solve? And that, again, should inform the features and functions that we decide to build. Similarly, when we have customers, they pay us money or they come to us. And when I say us, I mean, you know, those that work in technology on a product team. Um, and this could be customers, but this also could mean different things like users. It could mean readers. It could mean different things. So folks along the spectrum of, of product development and the associated role. So developers, uh, business, designers, technical communicators, these are the types of questions that folks in those roles need to be asking. Um, what do customers need to see before they buy? Because when we deliver things that solve our customers' problems, they help them get the things they need to get done accomplished, that's going to result in higher sales, um, making more money, um, gaining more loyalty and more users. So let's take a look at this. What is this? You might say, well, it's a picture of a Jeep. Okay, I can see it's got, you know, certain specifications. It's clearly got, you know, it's got different parts to it, like wheels and a steering wheel and a windshield and a, and a body. And it's got all these things and there are so many inches away from each other and there are so many, you know, parts that have to touch one another and have to be connected, right? This is the way too many companies build products because users don't care about any of these specifications. Buyers do not care. This is what buyers care about. When you ask a Jeep lover, what is a Jeep? This is what they're thinking. This is why they buy the product. Not because there's you know 48 inches apart between the wheels or because 
the certain specifications look a certain way. And here's another classic example of being product centric versus user centric. On the left, yes, you've got a you've got a product which is ketchup. You can deliver it in a certain way out of the bottle, but if you've ever used one of these bottles, you know that it's a little bit hard to get it out. It can get kind of stuck to the sides. It you know, it's glass, so you can't squeeze it. Um, you have to screw the lid back on instead of snapping it shut. Um, and on the right, we have the same product, the same ketchup, but the way we're delivering it is so much more tailored to the user's needs and more users' needs, right? Imagine people along the spectrum who might be a user. You've got maybe someone who's able-bodied versus someone who's disabled. You've got someone who's maybe an adult versus a child versus someone who's elderly. Which one of these options appeals to more people? When we think about travel, right, we have, you know, we all like to travel. When we think about product-centric views, we might list out the things that we think a website needs to have if we're on the, the, the back end side of building products, right? So we might say, we, we need to display 25 results. We need to have banners and we need to have integrated with Google Maps and we need to be able to expand, you know, this component when someone clicks it, right? But again, this is product-centric because all these things describe really the end result that should only be there after we've solved the right question. When users travel, and this is, you know, put yourself in the shoe, if you've, ever, if you've ever taken a trip anywhere, these are the types of goals that you have in mind. Prepare, you have to plan. Maybe there's things like cats or kids or things that are getting in your way as you're trying to pack. Of course, there's the experience of travel itself, including getting to the airport or getting to the train station or what have you, and all the, the tasks and the inconveniences that are that go there. And finally, you get to enjoy your destination. And that's only a one-way view of travel. Of course, then there's always the trip coming back home. Um, so these are the types of tasks that users have. And on the back end, as, as people that are building products, bu building websites, building applications, we need to be thinking about these goals, not whether or not something has 20 search results, right? Because that should really only come about as a possible solution to the right question. When we talk to users, they will help us sell more products. People want to buy things that make them happy. People want to be consumers, but they only want to give their money to companies they trust and that they think are actually doing things for them, solving needs for them. So you may remember the BlackBerry, you know, it was an older phone. It was one of the first quote unquote smartphones that was out there on the market. And at the time it was quite revolutionary and it had a giant market share of those who had smartphones because it was really just like the dominant player and one of the only um, products out there like it at the time. And it wasn't long though after that things like the iPhone and there were other kind of smartphones similar to iPhone that came out. And why did Blackberry fail? Why are there no more Blackberries anymore? Well, it was because BlackBerry thought about their users in a very linear way. And they said, well, we have, you know, our users are business people. Our users are business people and they want to get business tasks done on their phone. And so the BlackBerry needs to support business tasks and let them send emails and do reminders and take notes and record meetings and what have you. But think about your life as a student. Think about people that you know who are business people. Yes, they are business people, but that's not, people are more multidimensional than that. That's too narrow minded to categorize your users as one type of person, AKA a business person, because business people have families. They want to take photos. Business people go on vacations. Business people enjoy music, podcasts. They enjoy games. They enjoy reading and movies. They're just like everyone else, but of course there are parts of their days, parts of their lives that may require them to do certain tasks that are business oriented, but that's not all that they are. And by not tailoring this phone to accommodate more, um, more of the spectrum of the goals that they have, um, you know, BlackBerry eventually was not able to keep up because they didn't invest in, in understanding their users and the, this wide variety of tasks that they want to get done. Okay, okay, so I've been talking for a while now and I keep talking about design thinking. Well, what is design thinking? Have you ever heard of that term before? So design thinking really just means 
uh, doing a number of different activities with a bunch of different types of people that work on the back end. So again, it could mean design, it could be communicators, it could be product people, um, and, and translating those things like user needs, right? So in the iPhone example, I have a need, yes, to write emails and take notes, but I also have a need to take photos of my family and to, to join, you know, to read books for my book club. Um, taking those needs and turning those into products and services, which in the case of Apple, turned into different types of apps that were not previously available on Blackberries. The thing about design thinking, um, it because it's so collaborative, it takes all the perspectives and the strengths of multiple types of job roles. Um, and this gives us better results that are always more innovative. Thinking about the term design thinking, I want you to just kind of break it out into what, what it literally, literally means. Think like a designer. We know that designers do things. They create things that are aesthetic. They create things that solve problems. And it could be a visual designer, but it could be a structural designer. Um, an engineer is a designer, an architect is a designer, really anyone who solves problems and creates a product that is meant to solve those problems is a designer. So when we say design thinking, we're just saying broaden out the types of roles that do activities that designers do, right? Including product people, developers, communicators, researchers, so that's really all it means is saying not just designers have to be the ones trying to solve these problems. Let everyone in. Let everyone bring to their to the table the skills that they have to solve the problems and do design thinking. It's interdisciplinary. So typically in the technology industry, there is something that is known as a three-legged stool, and that has to do with product, user experience, which includes design, it also includes research, and tech. So tech would be the folks that are coding, they're doing QA or um, quality assurance, they're uh, people that are architecting the back end and all the things that need to connect to one another. Product, um, typically they're things like product managers, product owners, but also there's different terms that we'll start to learn like marketing. Um, product takes in the customers and users directly. There's also strategy involved, right? Strategy looks at the market, which means just what's available out there today that are similar types of products and says, you know, is there a gap, which means that there's something missing or is there an oversaturation, which means there's already too much of the same type of product. And if we try to come in at this angle, we're just going to drown because there's already too much. Um, and then, of course, there's user experience, which includes design research. Um, we as you user experience tend to do things like branding, um, accessibility. So thinking about design thinking, um, let's talk about ways that it could be applied. Um, so redesign an entire application or experience. Yes, you could use it to do that, but you could also do it to just illustrate a new concept for a product, right? It could be narrow or big. What if you need to reimagine the quote unquote next generation of an existing product? So I'm not coming up with anything new in terms of a product, but I'm thinking about, well, what is the next phase of this? What are the next capabilities it needs to include? Um, could be very specific. I need to create a regional sales process that is digitally enabled. Okay, super specific. And I can use design thinking to do any of these. Um, thinking about the global sales process for a particular business, obviously that's a little bit wider in scope, um, but design thinking can solve almost any problem because again, all we're saying is think like a designer solve problems the way designers would, which is by talking to people, um, try, iterating on multiple ideas, trying new ideas. The other thing that designers have that design thinking allows to be kind of broadcast to different types of roles other than designers 